please place a demand on God to this morning. Can you tell God what you want him to do? Can you tell him that you step forward his head and touch you? That may you not come here as a spectator. Zipato libadabos. Amen. Listen to me. I like you to worship him. There is a lady here. You are menstruating, but your menstruation has passed the normal time. In fact, it has passed the normal time and is becoming a concern to you now. As you keep worshiping God, before this service end, you will discover that that blood has dried off. Baba Fagbara Reo Lori Amen. There is somebody here in your right ear. That is where the problem lies. You can only hear clearly with your left ear, but your right ear is not functioning well. I speak forth life into that right ear now. I command whatever affecting the effectiveness and the efficiency now to be removed now in the name of Jesus. Sir. As we are singing now, begin to hear with that ear now. I expect you to give your testimony. Baba Fagbara. experience will be the last time you ever have it in the name of Jesus. That yoke is broken in the name of Jesus. There is somebody here and if you are that person I'd like you to run out come, to come quickly. Sometimes ago in your business premises you arrived here and you found something ungodly around that your business friends. You have done your prayer, you have done your best, but since that time you discovered a kind of struggling in that business. If you are that person, please step forward. Therefore, by the time you arrive at that your business, there was something ungodly in that place. And since that time, your business, you have been struggling. I hope those of you in front, you got my message clear. If it is not meant for you, you go back. Now, listen to me. Open your eyes, don't close your eyes. Listen to me. I will pray a very simple prayer for you. That you could be destroyed. Yeah. I decree today. The Bible said the Son of God manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whatever ungodly, whatever fetish things that were done in the secret against the advancement and prosperity of your business. Because the Lord has spoken about it today. They are destroyed in the name of Jesus. 
I speak to the forces that were in action on that very hour, that second, that minute, when that ungodly act was carried out, I command the operation to expire now in the name of Jesus. I speak today. A maximum turn around as a deuce of heaven is released upon that your business premises and upon that your business uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, that your construction is this one in the name of Jesus. As you release that seed of restoration, income you supposed to have hanged but have been tied down. In triple fold, they begin to come in, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we pray. I congratulate you in the name of Jesus. Let me have your hand. Congratulations. 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 Congratulations, 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 congratulations. Can we please wave our hands to Jesus? Let's tell him, let's thank him. We give you praise. We give you praise. Lord, as we continue this morning, continue with us. Please honor your word. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Can you please celebrate yourself? Celebrate yourself. Please have your seat. Praise the Lord. I want to thank God for another Wednesday. I will thank God for the generals in the house, the choir for the wonderful edition, and all the ushers, technicals, RUV, security, everyone who have made this program a success. God bless you all. I'd like you to celebrate my two assistants, the APICP admin and CSR. Pastor Adedo and Pastor Odia. Can you please celebrate them? Celebrate them. God bless you, sirs. And let me celebrate the National Secretary and the Church Growth Officer. Can you please celebrate them? And can we please celebrate all the pastor in charge of zone and all the areas and party? Can you please celebrate them? Praise the Lord. Last week, I was the only one around there. The only woman I got married to was far away in another territory. But this money is here. Can you please celebrate my one and only wife? Let me celebrate her. God bless you. Ezekiel 37, verse 1, the hand of God, part 2. Next week, Wednesday, we continue with the hand of God, part 3. Ezekiel 37, we are reading verse 1. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones. That was Ezekiel. Remember that that last week I started by saying that the hand of God suggests what? Suggests what? And Psalm 16 verse 11 says what? Then the implication number one is what? The presence of God is what? It's an antidote to what? Which means that God's presence is a destroyer to what? Furthermore, you are allowed to come to his presence with problem, with sorrow, with challenges. But it is unscriptural, it is ungodly, it is unacceptable to do what? To return with the same problem. And we said the only reason why you can come to his presence and return is that you are physically present but you are not spiritually present in his presence. Because if you are presently present in his presence whatever that is presently present in your life that is ungodly will be swallowed up by what? By his presence. And that is how you enter into what? The fullness of his joy. And we also said that joy can be in measure. Joy can be in categories. And we cited an example of what? The widows of May. Now, this morning, I'd like to continue quickly with the benefit of his presence. 
Another benefit is that it is God's presence that guarantees success in the midst of opposition. It is God's presence that guarantees success in the midst of what? Opposition. In Psalm 23 verse 5, Psalm 23 verse 5, he said, he prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemy. He anoints my head with oil and my cup does well. My cup runneth over in the midst of the enemy. David was anointed, he succeeded, and there is nothing the opposition can do about it. Once you are a carrier of God's presence, the presence of God neutralizes the opposition of men. I have come to announce over 35 of you that have the strength to say the loudest amen. From today, every opposition that to your advancement, they are neutralized in the name of Jesus. Number two, it is God's presence that guarantees celebration and means opposition. It is God's presence that guarantees coronation and elevation in the midst of opposition. I repeat, it's God's presence that guarantees celebration and means opposition. It's God's presence that guarantees coronation and elevation in the midst of opposition. Say, in the presence of my enemy, I was anointed. I was elevated. I was coronated. I was honored. I was celebrated. And yet there is nothing they can do about it. They can only get angry. And that's what they can do about it. In the name that above every other name. 19 of you that say the loudest amen. As your amen go higher than that of your neighbor, God's presence is elevating you now. He's changing your levels. He's changing your status. In the name of Jesus. There is somebody here, the Lord said, I could tell you. There is a position that is supposed to give to you now. There are some forces within that circle that say, you know, just hear the Lord. He has crossed the opposition for your elevation. Once they give you that position, come to this altar and give the testimony because it is settled. Remember where we started? God's presence does what? Guarantee success was number two. And correlation and elevation in the midst of what? The implication of that one, therefore, is there is nothing like opposition where God's presence is guaranteed. Who do they want to oppose? That's the question. Who do they want to oppose? Is it the Almighty God? According to Genesis 17, verse 1. Is it the Almighty God that is presently present with you? They want to oppose? The one that owns, is it the one that owns all the powers? According to Psalm 62, verse 11, Psalm 62, verse 11, that said, Once has God spoken, said, Twice have I heard that power belongs to Him. Opposition only exists for the sake of vocabulary. Why God present is present. I repeat, note it down. Opposition only exists for the sake of vocabulary. Why God's presence is presently with you. It's just a mere vocab. It has no, it, it, it doesn't make any sense. Today, over four of you that say the loudest amen. The threat of opposition against your advancement and neutralize in the name of Jesus. Sam, listen to me. There is nothing like satanic threat when the one who is strong in battle is with you. The one who journeys in fire 
and make it powerless and impotent. There is nothing like a featherweight champion in the presence of heavyweight champion. His championship hangs in the community of featherweights. He is only relevant in the assembly of national champions. When God is with you, you are not only guaranteed victory, success, elevation, coronation, elevation, you remain untreatable. Nothing can treat you. Even you yourself, you become threat to them. When you hear somebody say, say I am a featherweight champion. When heavyweight champions arrive, he doesn't parade himself any longer as a champion. Because his championship ends in the community of the featherweight. Why the heavyweight champions appear? A major general is talking of what idea is Brigadier General? Of what idea? You talk. That is mutiny. And the punishment is death. Listen to me. I come as God's general today. Every small, small corner and captain from the pit of hell that is threatening you. I sentence them to eternal death in the name of Jesus Christ. Roman 8 at 1, Roman 8 at 1 say, if God be for us, if God is presently with you, who can be against you? Nobody. You are the only one that can be against yourself. And that is why before I continue my sermon this morning, you are in this service. You have not given your life to Jesus. It is dangerous for you to be saying amen to my prayer. Because after the service, they will fight back. The Bible says the foundation of God, unless you and God know those who are his. He knows those that carry his seal. So that you will not be wasted by the enemy. All eyes closed, all ears bowed. Are you here this morning that is this one sin you are struggling with? That is still one sin. And you want to say, Lord, please help me. Raise up your right hand. I want to pray anywhere you are. Both down, God bless you. Both down and in the gallery. Anywhere you are, raise up your right hand. I'd like to pray with you. Anywhere you are, you can don't don't come to this service and go like that. Raise up your right hand. You want to say, Jesus, you are my Lord. You are my Savior. You are my Lord. You are my Savior. Enough is enough over the sin. I don't want to continue in secret sin. Raise up. God bless those hands. God bless those hands. In the name that above every other name. Or shall every just take statistics of the number. I decree and I declare. Let mercy speak for you today. Your sins are forgiven. You are saved and you are empowered to sin no more. In the name of God the Father. Of the Son. And of the Holy Ghost. Ask now please. Now listen to me. David was a threat to King Saul. Even though he was not a king, a Cesaphonis became a threat to those who thought that they are ahead of you. Beginning from now, the Lord will do great and mighty things that will make them to bow to your God in the name of Jesus. Israel was a threat to nations of the world around them. Anytime they hear about them like this, they are filled with parable fear. Because God was with them. The reason why many of us are dominated by forces that are naturally supposed to be under you, under you because is because you are deficient of God's presence. And that is why many are not experiencing the fullness of joy. Naturally, all these demonic forces are supposed to be under your feet. But the reason why they are dominating your life is because you are deficient of his presence. In the name that above every other name from today, as you make up your mind to serve God in holiness and righteousness, you begin to enjoy God's presence with his benefit in the name of Jesus. Before we begin to pray, I will just introduce this. Last week I said the hand of God suggests his presence. The second thing, the hand of God that is suggests contact. Hands of God 
upon her, suggests contact. If you hear that and say the hand of God was upon me, that means that the hand of God was in contact with that very person. That's a divine contact with that very person. Unfortunately, many of us, we don't know that our lives are lives of contact, a counter. And you call it contact, you call it a counter. Between the time you slept yesterday and you woke up this morning, you have had several encounters. In your dream, you have found yourself in some places you cannot explain. You have greeted somebody this morning. You have shook hands with somebody this morning. You have worn a shoe or a slippers, a sounder. It's a counter. It's an encounter. Our life is a life of daily encounter. Nobody lives a day without an encounter, without a contact, either with somebody or with something, either with a living thing or a non-living thing, either with a visible force or invisible forces. You have contact every day. On foot, everywhere you have contact. And this encounter could either be physical or be spiritual. Every encounter you have, there are times it could be in form of physical, but we have a spiritual implication. There are times you could have a spiritual encounter, then you will see the physical manifestation. Many slept in the night. They had a strange encounter. By the time they woke up, they became paralyzed. Like the people that came out, some people went to the front shop, did some finishing. It was an encounter. When you go there, you encounter that. You make contact with that, and the spiritual consequences are manifesting. I don't want to go deep. By next week, we'll continue further in that one. Is that a counter? I've seen a choir member in a service who asked for the slippers because he wore cover shoe and said he was feeling uncomfortable and asked for the slippers of a fellow choir member. And the choir member gave her the slippers as soon as he made contact, as soon as he made contact with that slippers unlimited problem enter into her life. Just by wearing the slippers, she encountered a negative tendency because she was deficient of God's presence. The Bible says God be with you. Who God be for you can be against you. Even when you eat food that were poisonous, it will not have any effect on you. It's because God's presence is a neutralizer to evil poisoning and to every satanic oppression. A counter. That is why somebody can also shake hands with you. And you also have an encounter. Something positive can enter into your life. And something negative can enter into your life. Somebody can buy item from your shop. By procurement of that item. From the moment you collected that money. And that person took that item from your shop. You have an encounter. And that person begins to go down. Ladies and gentlemen, sons and daughters of the kingdom, today, every negative encounter you have had, either in the physical or in the dream world, that is not having the physical consequence in your life, by the name of Jesus, they are neutralized. Bartimaeus' eyes were open by a counter. Saul became Paul in Act 9 by a counter. In Mark 5, 25 to 34, Mark 5, 25 to 34, 34, the woman of the issue of blood was made whole by a counter with Jesus. In Mark 5, verse 1 to 9, Mark 5, 1 to 9, the madman of Gadaran was made, was delivered by a counter with Jesus. In John chapter 5, verse 1 to 7, John 5, 1 to 7, the man at the pool of bed cedars was delivered and made whole by a counter with Jesus. In John chapter 9, verse 1 to 9, John 9, verse 1 to 9, the 
the guy that was born without eye socket was restored, his eye was restored by an encounter with Jesus. Today, whatever encounter has ever done for anybody, and you need that one, you will not escape. I say you will not escape. I say you will not escape. Is anybody ready for that encounter? Is anybody ready for a counter? Then rise to your feet. Rise to your feet if indeed you are ready for that encounter. Wave your hands to Jesus. Just wave your hands to Jesus. Sir. Wave your hands to Jesus. This is a very sacred and very serious moment now. Do you know this song? Father, don't let them ask. Don't let them ask. Don't let them ask. Where is my God? My request today. Father, don't let them ask. Don't let them ask. Where Say, my father, my fighter. 
In the name of Jesus. unexpectedly. The woman of the issue of blood had a counter with Jesus. A long time ailment was made all instant and now. Oh, why should you allow Jesus to bypass you this morning? Clap your hand and shout for us. Say, my father, my fighter. A counter, my Lord. Let there be a change of story. Somebody clap and pray. Somebody pray. Shabbat. Jesus! 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 
Jesus. Jesus. Yes, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Look at them now. We are there. We are the five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes, 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 yes. We are the ushers. We are the ushers. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening. Everywhere, 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 everywhere. Now, that 
that yoke is destroyed now. Now! So 